Um, yes. So I'm just curious because I know you had a little bit of exposure to human design. So let me know where you are on this journey. Like what, how much do you know of it? I know you know you're a projector, but like talk me through it. Well, after finding out um, that I'm a projector, a lot of the things that I do led me towards when, when it was explained to me, it became clearer and clearer how, how I come up with decisions that I make and the creative part especially is what, how it was explained to me, you, you almost have to be invited in to shine. So I'm not someone who just goes out and broadcasts how great I am or what I do. I have to be invited to be able to to show or explain or or demonstrate what I do. That's right. So that was yeah. interesting. That was very interesting. And did it resonate with you? Like, how did you feel finding that out? Because I just know, I mean, I actually have a lot of projectors in my family. And before, you know, working with human design, I couldn't understand why they had to sleep in late, why they were spending time on a couch, actually all of them are men. They're like permanently on a couch while I wanted to get up and do things. They were like, no, just leave us alone. How did it kind of resonate with you knowing that you were a projector? Um, a lot of the uh, characteristics didn't resonate with me because A, I don't sit on the, the sofa, the couch. Um, but one thing I noticed is that I don't necessarily talk about what I do, but when someone does ask me, what do you do? When I, when, when I get started and talking about it, they see the light, the passion, the excitement. Um, yeah. So I, the way it was described to me, it's almost like I change personalities. But, a yes. lot of, but I'm always in my thoughts. I'm always thinking. I can be walking around the corner. And by the time I get back, I've already created a story. So I would sit down and write my story. So I'm very, very much like that. I'm very highly intuitive. Um, I work a lot with intuition. I have, when I'm speaking to a potential client and they're telling me what I do, what, what they do and what they need help with, I can literally feel it in my body, whether or not it's something that remains a hobby or the, what are the potentials of that person's business it's yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we will dive deeper we will dive deeper into it it doesn't you don't feel that because you're a projector necessarily but it's actually part of your chart exactly what you described so we'll go deeper into it um just now so for those for those who are listening the um Marjorie human design type is a projector and projectors make about roughly 20 percent of population and their natural um guides and coaches and teachers they're really here to lead humanity forward, especially generators um, like myself. <laughs> and their gift, like your natural gift, is to see like this deep potential within other people. So I love the way Ra, like Ra Uruhu, he's the founder of Human Design System. He basically says, you know, um, that projectors always wondering why others are so stupid. It's like, can't you just see what you're truly capable of? And they've got this like penetrating, you know, like penetrating energy almost that they can draw the potential of every single person and really lead them and guide them. But in order to do that, they need to be invited. Otherwise, you know, they will be met with resistance. How does that feel for you? Yes. Well, it, it would be nice to know how to overcome that because once in a while you do have to get out there. So mostly in networking events, I'm quite happy to just step aside and observe. And, and then when I'm invited in, then I talk. But I would like to be, be more out there to share what I do, you know. But yeah, I guess it's something that I need to, I'm not shy at all. I'm not a shy person. I just like observing. I really enjoy observing my surroundings. Right. And I mean, as a projector, it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, go and speak to people or even initiate conversations. You absolutely can. And you can be out there. And in fact, you know, I, I know a lot of projectors in business and the way they find a success is actually by sharing as much mm -hmm. as they can, but not necessarily approaching directly to a person and saying, hi, I think you'll be really good at this. Let me guide you. Yes. So rather than just sharing with everybody, what is it that you know? 
And also projectors does not have a um, sustainable energy, unlike generators. And there is a tendency sometimes not to know when enough is enough. So it's like to overwork and because you also you borrow energy from people around you. So, for example, you can be like you and I talking now. I'm a generator. You can borrow my energy and you're like, I feel amazing. I've got so, so much energy. Let me go, go, go. And then you feel exhausted. <laughs> I'm just curious. How does that, um, does that feel true to you? Yes. A bit, well, yeah, I go, go, go. You're right. I do it. And um I've always had that. I, I just thought I was a workaholic. That's how I put it down to. But um, when do I get exhausted is when I, do, when I stop. When I stop is when I get tired. But if I don't stop, I, I, I'm, I can continue on and on. And like you said, not only being some boring energy as an empath, I'm Pisces, so I'm also an empath. So I'm also <laughs> borrowing even that absorbing other people's energy you also, I mean, when, yeah so i mean what actually gives you that extra because even um with projectors who are not energy types um they're not really designed to work constantly so it's mm -hmm. more like short bursts of you know energy you work 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 but yes. i mean probably in those two three hours you can accomplish more than many other people accomplish in a day but then as i said it's like knowing when it's time to pause and just go go for a walk or go do something else or just to sit on a couch and do nothing because it's when you step away from something, that's when you reintegrate, you re-energize and you actually speed up yes. rather than pushing, pushing, pushing and then crashing out and it's like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's exactly what I do. I, I have a program. I'm very disciplined with how I work, but in between I take breaks Um I might start working at eight in the morning and at 10, I'll take a break. I'll start ironing. Yeah, you and your or ironing. I'll start <laughs> cooking, you know. So, and then when that exercise is finished, then I go back, okay, I'll iron for half an hour. And right at half an hour, I stop. And then I go back to work. And I, you know, that's how I program my whole day, my whole day, including my breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. And also, you know, when it comes, because you know about the projectors, authorities also. So in your chart, you have a defined heart. It's a will center. Um, it's like a little triangle on the side of a chart. And what actually it means, you actually do have that energy to commit and to challenge yourself and to push through those commitments and challenges. And that actually gives you that extra um, you know, so for projectors who don't have that authority, like the difference, like a splenic authority, etc., they don't have that consistent supply of energy. So when you look at the projectors, you're probably on the more energetic side, which explains, <laughs> uh, you know, why you actually have this strength to to go longer than some other people. Um, so when we then talk about your strategy, so strategy is something here to, I guess, to protect you, to guide you to the right choice, to stop you going to the, from the, you know, chasing down the opportunities that are not right for you. Mm -hmm. So strategy for generators, I mean, for, for projectors is to wait to be invited. And that basically means that your best opportunities come when you are invited and when you recognize um, when people come to you for guidance and for, for support rather than you going and initiating like what many faces are designed to do. So talk me through, you know, how that's kind of, how does that resonate with you? Did you notice that when you wait for the right opportunity, it's always a better opportunities than the one that you initiated? Yes. The ones I initiate, what happens is that um, there's always this feeling of disconnection. So mm -hmm. when you're going through the process and asking the, the, the same questions, you would ask someone who approaches me for a call, let's say, the dynamics is very different. So when I have someone who, who, who reaches out and say, can we talk? Can we have a talk about my business or, or you know, what I, I'm having a thought of an idea and all that. It's a different dynamic when you get on the phone. And when you're doing a, a strategy call or a diagnostics, um, if that person booked when you initiated the call, it's a lot, it, uh, there's more struggle to get the answers out of them. But if that person then books 
the call, the strategy call or the uh, diagnostics, I call it, um, it's a lot more fluid and the breakthroughs are more powerful. And that's really noticeable at the end. And, and, the, and the breakthroughs that are powerful, they're, they're, they're completely mind-blowing. I've seen it so many times again and again. Luckily, a lot of the uh, calls I get, a lot of the bookings are referrals. So they're not somebody I have to chase. They actually reach out. But I'd like to also be able to reach out because, you know, the, there's a lot more if you're if you're only depending on referrals that dries up sins and you want the wider reach so you have to put your out yourself out there and and putting yourself out there it's not that it's difficult it's just that it doesn't it's not natural so i have to do the work and i struggle i create programs that schedule things and all i need to do is press send and that send it is a struggle, so that's what I'm trying to overcome. Yeah, and it's, it, it's it comes to your profile. It's not even your design. It's not even being a projector, but it's your profile, which we'll dive to in a minute, and you will know exactly why that happens. And everything you said is completely makes sense. I mean, even as a generator, I find exactly the same thing. When somebody approaches me, they wouldn't get on a call with me. It's very different energy, very different dynamics. And once again, before discovering human design, I thought it was just me, you know, I thought it was just maybe I just don't like sales or whatever it is. But now obviously learning about, you know, working with human design, I understand it's not me. It's the, just the art of being generated or projected, yeah. like waiting for invitation or waiting for to respond. So, um, so let's just quickly talk about your authority. So in human design, authority is how you make decisions and your authority can never be your mind. Your mind is here for inspirations, for ideas, for creativity, and it can serve as an outer authority to someone else. So you can be someone else's authority to, like, to guide them, to lead them as a projector, only obviously when you invite it. Well, the best case scenarios, right? But your mind can never be your authority. So do you know about your authority, anything? No, no, no. I I was told, um, but you know, because I didn't understand it, it doesn't make, it doesn't really say anything to me. Really <laughs> okay. So your authority is ego projected authority, and when you look at your charts, I know you generated your charts yesterday. You will see there's a little triangle, like it's a heart yes. uh, energy center. So that's that's colored in. So you are ego projected authority, and it's actually the rarest um, pro uh, project authority. And all about really decision-making process for you is asking yourself what's in it for me, right? It's like, is this really what I want? Because you are here to know what you want and only really do things and respond to opportunities that feel right for you. And one thing I know about projectors is that sometimes they wait and wait for opportunities and they get like so bitter that nothing is coming. They just take the first opportunity um, that arises. So for you, when something comes up, it's very important for you to, before you commit yourself to something, do I really want this? So I to ask that. And um, so, you know, when, when, as I said, when you invite it, you ask yourself, is this the right opportunity? Is this the right person? Do I truly want to work with them? Because you're here to empower others, but only who are ready to be empowered. And those people need to be your people. You're not really here to empower strangers. And we'll dive into your profile now and explain why. You're here to empower people that have been referred to you from your network, from the friends, from your peer groups so of people you know. I'm just curious, is that resonating? Well, yes, that's where ideal clients come in. Yeah. The, it's so important that when you qualify a client, you do a diagnostics with them. From that diagnostics, you're able to determine whether you can help them or not. You know, earning something, you know, we all need to earn, we all need to pay our bills. But at the end of the day, if you feel there's no connection, you won't get them to what they're looking for. So yes, it is very important for me to know that I'm, I'm working the right client, not only for my sake, but also for their sake, because they're investing in me. And I want that wow factor. I want them to succeed. And I, I literally won't stop until they succeed because that's the ego, you know? Yes. It's important for me to mm. shine through them because I want them to succeed, which is good. I think it's a good value to have. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's why, you know, with your defined heart, so only like 30 something percent of people have a defined heart center, which means majority of us don't even have the energy to commit to, to anything or prove ourselves ourselves to anyone. For me, for example, you know, I actually stopped committing to things because sometimes I say, yes, I'm going to do it or I'll jump into something and I'm going like, what did I just get myself into? So one thing for you also to understand is that because you're a minority, maybe just lessen the expectations of others, you know, so not even like getting them to commit to, mm -hmm. to, to, whether it's a social or business events, just realizing that majority of the people you meet, they just don't have the energy to commit and committing for them actually is not good. But the way for you to really move forward, to make uh, progress, to have success, and also to keep your heart healthy is to, you know, by making those commitments and by keeping them, but always checking with yourself first, would I love that? Um, is this what's in it for me, right? I mean, all to the point of being selfish because your health is on the line and obviously your success is also. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. So let's just jump into your profile. So do you know anything about your profile? Um, no, no. I knew um, I was an ego manifester and projector, but you mentioned there's four one, level one, four, but again, that didn't mean anything to me. <laughs> yeah. So profile, when you look at your chart, you will see the top, uh, on the left and on the right of the chart, there is like a sun symbol and there is a little number. So your first number is one and your second one is four. So it means your conscious energy is one and your subconscious is four. So your profile one, four, it's all about, uh, it's very interpersonal. You know, it's kind of absorbed. It's all about self, really finding out what works, what's, what inspires you, what motivates you, how you get to learn and grow. It's all about your personal journey rather than looking at what others are doing. And you have a really natural gift establishing um, relationships, but like deep relationships because your network is your net worth and the success in your business and your life are determined by your network. Um, and you have this like inner, inner urge almost to share your knowledge, to share your findings, the research with the people you know. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, for you, it's really important to get to the bottom of everything because line one, which is in your conscious, it's all about research. It's all about like foundation. It's all about, you know, gathering the data and information before you really feel like, I know, I know what's enough. And then when you invite it into an opportunity, somebody wants to work with you, to be coached by you, that's when you share with them your finding. And that's when you become the leader um, who can truly empower people to reach their potential, right? But your whole opportunities, everything really comes from your network. How does that feel? That sounds very good. That sounds very much like me, actually. That Yeah, yeah. I can see while you're speaking, I, I can go through the way I present myself is very much that, that way. Yeah. I don't try to know it all, but I make sure whatever I say, I do know. <laughs> It, yes, yes. I mean, and I also know, you know, that you you really are very good at building relationships, you know, and having community. So one thing I, I hear a lot of, you know, people speaking like on LinkedIn, because I mean, I hang out a lot on LinkedIn and it, the importance of building communities and having your network. And that's not true for everyone. You know, there's some people who can create success and have amazing business without a network, without support of the trusted, you know, uh, group of people. But like for me, for example, you know, because my profile is three, five, and I'm more here ready to influence strangers than people I know. So, and also like uh, having a community is probably not something I'm really that passionate about, but for you having that community. So like when it comes to um, marketing, even, you know, like maybe Facebook groups or like LinkedIn groups or something where you can really nurture that re relationship is so important for you. Is it something you really do in your business? Well, that is always something that I've I've always created businesses and created relationships. So when I when I created the um, the um, the contract, like the agreement to work together, the relationship is solid. And and in 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 the past, I created an ecological travel business. I didn't know anything about ecological, but I knew how to travel. So before I started, I created a strong foundation 
around my business. So that's what I do. I create systems that enable your business to run well without having the repetition of doing the same things over and over again and putting strategies in place. And the strategies is a lot has to do with um, relationship building. A lot of a lot of times you get referred to pe by people who you don't even know, but you know through someone else. So someone else is giving your credibility to someone else. So you're getting it from different different angles. So it's not directly related to you. It can be from someone who knows someone who knows someone, but the original person who's giving credibility is like three times removed from the actual person who's calling you. It's amazing. But and that is the power of client building. And in my previous job, I worked for a fine art shipping industry for 20 years. And I had a very strong vendor client relationship, especially with vendors. The amount of favors I had to ask them, credits, time to pay them and all that. And and they would always give it to me, but they gave it to me because of me. It wasn't really, uh, it wasn't backed up by the company. It was more because of the relationship I've built with them. And whenever you commit, you have to, you have to, you have to commit and you have to deliver. And if you're unable to deliver, you have to make contact and say, I promise to deliver, but in this instance, I'm not able to, but you're always communicating communicating client building is a really really strong it's it's a strong um what do you call it it's a, yeah it, it's it, it's yeah you, you can be you can only be successful when you're able to have solid relationships with with different types of organization and, and clients for you absolutely for oh you yeah, know, for me. yeah 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 for you is absolutely and as i said you know when like whenever i see line force i'm like just invest in your community as much as you can because that's where all of your opportunities come from rather than from complete strangers you know like for me it's more from strangers um also yeah i mean obviously referrals that and that but um but for you, it's all about the people you know and who they know, obviously. So just exactly like what you explained. Sorry, I've just got like random cats walking in my house. I'm like wondering. <laughs> I've got so many cats. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> so weird. So, um, okay. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so strange. I've got a cat and it's got like best two friends and they're just like going in and out. They're like, just like hanging out. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's go, uh, let's go uh, further. Um, so you've got one channel. Do you know what a channel is? Well, I know what a channel is, but I don't know how, how it expresses itself in human design. Okay, so you have a uh, channel is when the lines that connect two centers together. And when you have the full thing colored in, that's called the channel. And that's your core strength. So some of them, you will, when you look at your design, you will see that uh, only half of it is colored in. So that means it's not always active. You need someone else to activate it or the planets and transits, you know, and that's how it becomes then fully expressed energy. But with a channel, you always have that consistent um, energy in your in your chart, and that also becomes your that's also your core strength. So you have a channel that connects your heart to your identity things. Identity is that thing that's colored in yellow in the middle for you, and it's called the channel of initiation. So basically, your strength, your natural gift, is to move humanity towards their potentials. So it's literally like recognize the potential in other people. So already being a projector, that's your natural gift, but this highlights it even more so. So it's to recognize their potential. And then once they actually invited you into this experience, then you can empower them to fulfill it. And with your defined heart sense, and you've got a gate 51, uh, which is all about, you know, you set up yourself challenges and you also push yourself to commit, to succeed, to deliver, to grow and expand. And you lead them by example. Let me know if that resonates. Oh, that sounds really good. I'd like to think that I lead by example. <laughs> And I think I do. Well, from what I, I know I about you, you do. Because, I mean, I know how much you, like, really challenge yourself. So, and when, you know, obviously I went into your design, I was like, yep, that explains Marjorie. That explains <laughs> why she does that. So, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, as I said, I mean, the whole key in your design, I mean, everything talks about the importance of waiting. Um, obviously, we know waiting is the thing right for projectors, but especially for you. And one of the reasons why, especially for your design, is because when you look at your chart, you've got a lot of openness, right? So when you look at the, the nine energy centers and you have some of them white and you have some of them, you only have two colored in. So uh, all of the whiteness, it means it's uh, open centers. And this is how, I mean, in traditional human design, says that's where our conditioning comes from because we take energy of others and we absorb it. And sometimes it's really tricky to know what's ours and what isn't. And that's why when we don't understand, like, you know, the emotions, for example, you're an empath, right? So you've got an open emotional um, solar plexus. And that means you not just take emotions of others, but you take them and you amplify them. So, you know, even if you're speaking, let's say, to your clients and maybe they're a little bit like annoyed or whatever, you know, whatever they're feeling, you actually amplify this. And there could be almost like a tendency to think like, what's wrong with me? I'm not delivering or, you know, I'm not... I'm failing, whatever, whatever it is that we begin to think. And that's why waiting for the right opportunity is so, so important. Because when you do, none of that really would, would happen or the chances of that smaller. Does that make sense? Yes. But one of the things I've learned is that as an empath, I'm able to dis detach myself. So I don't take their energy. If I speak to them, they say I feel low, then I go into NLP. Like, why you feel low? What is the, from, from one to 10, where are you feeling low? So we go through the exercises of pinpointing where that feeling is coming from. So instead of owning it, I'm working through it. At the end, we get, a, we get them grounded, like I get them grounded. So they feel motivated again to continue because, you know, working for yourself is, you know, self-motivating. You have to know why you're doing it. You're constantly hitting a brick wall. Why me? Who wants to work? You know, all the negative, you know, brain chatter, that mind chatter that we always have to over overcome. Um, yeah. So being an empath, I've learned how to detach myself. So in the past, I'd absorb everyone's and be I'd cry for somebody I don't even know you know <laughs> so I've stopped all that <laughs> no it's really good and obviously I know you do a lot of work on yourself you know it's so important um I just you know I just also know when we go out into the world with other people you know I, I don't know about you but because I'm also very open I only have two senses defined like you I come home and I'm like I'm exhausted or I feel I really feel so strongly you know different emotions so it's just really important not to do anything impulsive, you know, mm -hmm. when you come home because you, you don't even know these people. We just literally take and take and take. Yeah. Um, and I just want to also look at your root center. So, you know, the root, the bottom center in your chart, and that's all about the divine timing and also stress. It's a pressure center. So with the open root center, uh, we are sensitive to other stress. Yeah, so if somebody's stressed, we pick up their stress and we amplify mm -hmm. that. Is that something you yes. do? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think more yeah. with my son than anybody yes. else. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, I do that. Like I was going to say, I do it with my daughter a lot. When she's like, she feels like stressed or, you know, I, I really I pick it up and I become even more stressed. Um, and another thing, it's all about the timing. It's all about like, I have to do more. I haven't done enough. And sometimes it's like almost like doing, I don't know if you spoke about that before, you know, just like doing for the sake of doing, you like do it, put a checkbox, do it, put a checkbox. While instead of like grounding yourself and going, oh, am I doing what I truly must do? Or am I just doing things because I sh think I should be doing something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. we're also learning, right? We're also learning how to how to adapt. You know, not to be to understand where where as as parents we tend to no, this is what you do. This is but now things have changed. We're able to ask them the same questions we ask our clients or we ask ourselves because they're human as well, and they go through a different type of stress in their lives, especially in today's society. So instead of taking over their own pressures. Um, I, I do the same thing. <laughs> you know, I go through where, where is it originating from? 
or mm. you know our kids like to dump on us a lot you know they want to just make us make whatever they're feeling go away that's how they are yeah. right so yeah Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's you know and I think having this kind of awareness about what's going on in your energy field, you know, like how you react to your children or to clients or the people you meet, not absorbing their feelings and not being pressured, you know, to do things because it's something I think we've always done, right? Both coming from corporate, like we had tasks, responsibilities and we just were like in a doing mode. But what I find is that especially when you've got an open route, you are much more susceptible to that pressure than people who have a defined route. So people who's got it colored in, the more like grounded, they can really manage the time. And even if they're late, they don't really care as much as we do, you know? And I see <laughs> that my daughter, she's got a defined route. She's got like, You know, she's not really bothered. While me and my son, who are both open route, we're like, "You're gonna be late. Come on, let's go, let's go." You know, it's something like obviously I'm becoming so much more aware of. And instead of like doing something next, it's almost doing completely opposite. It's all about breaking the patterns, right? Yes, yes, yes. yeah. It's just slowing down. I think it's down. really interesting to know. I think even for anyone who's curious enough to know what their human design is, it. It just answers a lot of questions of how you do things or how you are as a person. You know, it's not enough looking at astrology. You have astrology, you've got human design together. It really completes the picture of who you are. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And the I more, I, I don't know it enough to, but now that I'm learning a little bit more, um, yeah, it's definitely very interesting. <laughs> And the, I think the beauty of human design is that it gives you your two parts of you, right? It's something you're conscious of and something you're not conscious of. Uh, and considering we're running the patterns and the programs that we're not aware of, I think understanding that side is so important because who was it? it was it Carl Jung, I think. He said, until you make your unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Yeah. And human design really helps you to understand yourself on such a deep level and also to bring those two parts of you into more harmony and balance, you know, so there's not like two of you running around being two different people, um, but it's like you're a very conscious, present person. And that's what's, you know, that's what's attracted me to human design. Um, so do you have any questions about your chart? Before um, we go? Well, I think what you've explained is very good. I think what you've explained helps me. So I guess the next question would be, how how much deeper can you go through um, human design? You know, make like you said, making decisions, how you make decisions, and how you strategize in business mm. using human design, working with different models because you've got generator you've got manifesto you've got a reflector and projector so you've got different types of personality and when you're leading in them into business success you're dealing with so many different it's almost like it would be good to have their human designs in front of you so when you create your strategy to get the most out of each person you're you're working with Absolutely. And I think it's such a powerful tool. You know, like we spoke about creating this webinar uh, or masterclass, the business, business by design, because well, what I see the problem is that uh, is where we all hire coaches. Well, a lot of people hire coaches. I mean, I've had so many, you know, and I know you also have. And they teach you from the way they've done things, which is great. And, um, you know, I know they all, most of them come from best intentions. But what is true for them, what works for them will probably not work for someone else, just maybe because the human design is different, even if they're the same type. But we're looking at profiles, we're looking at conditioning, we're looking at the gates and the channels, and there is so much that can play, um, you know, a, a play the, what do you call it? I can't remember the word, but be the difference why some people can succeed and why Yeah. others don't so that's why i believe you know when you're actually creating a business and even understanding like what does it mean to wait to respond what does it mean to wait to be invited for some people being in the right location with the right people is so so crucial that it can be deal breaker for them yes. you know especially like the people how do we make decisions so for you it's all about checking with yourself like 
what's in it for me? Literally, that's the first thing is to be like, even like if somebody comes to you with an opportunity or to work with it, what's in it for me, right? Do I really want this? Because at the end of the day, your heart will be impacted if you make a wrong decision. So it's not even success, it's also your health that will be impacted. You know, for other people, for example, for myself, it's all about following my guts. And when people say, follow your gut, it's actually not true for everyone. Like if I told you to follow your guts, you may say to me, I don't have a gut or like, you know, I'm not completely aware of it. You might be aware of it, but it's not going to be your truth, right? Same as for my daughter, for example, gut is like not her truth. But for me, and the more I practice, the more I lean into it, I, will, I would literally know what is right, what is not. You know, for some people it comes through uh, like um, through talking. They need to hear the voice, right? So when you hear the voice, you find clarity in what you're saying and that's how you make decisions. So everybody's structured so differently. And I know like as a business owner, you've got to make so many decisions. And sometimes there's like just massive overwhelm and we start tapping into our head, into our logical minds, how we should do certain things. We look at our past experiences, we like, ask for advice from everyone else. And then it's just this like big chaos. And then we make a decision and be like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. Not, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> well, um, one yeah, of the it's things, all... pardon me. No, go on, go on. Oh, one of the things I'm very aware of when there's an important decision. You, I can't hear you, Mike. Oh, there you go. You're back. Yeah. Oh. It's really looking at different angles to to what it is. And, and, and you're right. Gut feeling is very important. Intuition is very important. It really plays a big role. If it doesn't sit well, deep, you know, dive deeper. Why doesn't it sit well? And look at different angles before even... And then you go with your intuition. And then you go, you know, you look at different things before making that final decision. It, it's, yeah, it, in the past, it was mo more like a reaction. You know, you react. So you make a decision because you have to react. It's expected of you. But now, you don't have to. You can actually take a step back, look at it from different angles. How does it sit in your gut? What are the... Um, what are the common sense, like the logical, the logical patterns? And then you make a decision. So it's not anymore that reactive way. Um, I think people are becoming more and more conscious rather than being reactive. Uh, in, yes, in making you're right. Decisions. And for about 50% of population, exactly what that what needs to happen because they have an emotional definition. So it means that they make decisions with their emotions and there is no clarity for them in and now. So they actually need to basically step away. And the best thing they can do for themselves is to say, can I get back to you or let me sleep on this, yes. you know, and really keep on checking with them. For others, like for me, my gut will know in a moment. Yeah. For me, I know it's in the moment. If I don't make a decision in a moment, I can still come back to it, of course, and make it. But then I know my mind starts like, oh, should I do this? Should I? And as soon as you start questioning it, then I know it's like your mind playing. But it's, it's, it's a practice, you know. Yes. It's, it's, your intuition is a muscle, right? You don't go yeah. to the gym and like bench press 50 kgs <laughs> and run a marathon. You start on small things, you know, and that's why like asking questions. So for generators, for manifesting generators, the way they can train the intuition is through simple yes and no questions. So people can just ask them yes and no question and they respond. They respond with their gut, like without overthinking, you know. Uh, for other people, it's obviously different tools and strategies, but I feel like human design really gives us this foundation that the blueprints, which helps us to navigate through any challenges, through any decision making, any opportunities and more integrity and being actually authentic to our own truth. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree completely. And I'm looking forward to our masterclass. You know, this is the next yes. thing we should talk about is... Um, yeah, it's collaborating and something really exciting. I'm looking forward to creating the program for it. Yes. So, um, so Marjorie and I, Marjorie is like an incredible business builder. She literally transformed people businesses and we thought it would be beautiful to bring human design and create even a more customized kind of, I guess, program for, for people to help them build their business according to their um, their energy and how they are wired. So we're going to be running free masterclass, um, 
don't know yet when we're going to talk about it, maybe August sometime where you will learn how to create your business plan and get clear on your vision according to your human design. So I'm so, so looking forward to it. And yes. yeah, we're just going to liaise and finalize there or get the details and start putting that together. But we'll keep everybody posted on the progress. Yes. It's going to be exciting. It's, you're going to learn a lot. And, you know, when I created my part for the vision and, and building a business based on the vision you have for your business and connecting all the dots, it just, it made sense. It made sense. And it's something I'm going to be sharing and bringing your, you know, your specialty of human design. It's just going to be mind blowing. It will it be mine. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm also excited. So that's enough. I'm most excited. That's the my main thing. <laughs> Hopefully we can get others excited. Yes. Cool, Mark. You are. It's been amazing talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on. And yeah, we'll speak soon. Yes. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to um, getting together and creating our program. Thank you. Definitely. definitely. Bye. Bye. <laughs>